Hi, this is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com. Uh, welcome on in. Uh, just to remind you, I have my quit drinking boot camps coming up. London was this month sold out. It was an amazing day in Covent Garden, England. And uh, next one is going to be Nashville on the 24th of February, 2019. Uh, we're about 80% sold out in that one. So if you want to come now is the time to book your place. Toronto, Canada is going to be the 31st of March, first time ever in Canada. And then we've just released the Sydney, Australia date, which is going to be the 28th of April, 2019, the first time in Australia for Quit Drinking Boot Camp as well. So if you want to come along and deal with problem drinking in one amazing day with me, then go to the website, stopdrinkingexpert.com right now. Today, I want to talk about getting the mindset to making quitting drinking easy. Or if you prefer getting the mindset to staying sober, or if you prefer getting the mindset to do anything important in your life. Because, look, I know that, you know, this can sound a little bit wishy-washy. And certainly a lot of the times when people come to me with problems with their drinking, they just want the cure. And they want it as easy as possible and they want it as simple as possible. And they say, just give me the silver bullet that will make this go away. So when you start saying things like, let me talk to you about your positive mindset around this, people go, yeah, 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 whatever, wishy-washy, nonsense, just give me the cure. But actually, this is a part of the solution to problem drinking is getting your head in the right place. There's that old saying, that famous saying that says, whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're right. And that is so true. And what I've found over the years is actually thoughts become things. Now, this is really important when it comes to changing something big in your life. You know, if you've spent a decade building up this drinking problem and you're now in a loop that you can't break, your, your body, your mind, your lifestyle, your family, everything has become accustomed to you drinking poison on a daily basis. Your body is coping as best it can and so it's adapted and it's changed to getting used to having poison in your bloodstream 24-7. So when you have to change something this dramatic, it's really important that you get your head in the right space to do it. Now, this is something that I firmly believe in because it's changed my life. You've probably heard this described as the law of attraction in the past. And I, I'm, I hesitate to even use that phrase because I know that some people who've come here for serious advice to stop drinking will think, law of attraction, are you serious? That new age mumbo jumbo. But now the law of attraction, is, you know, you're either going to fit into one of three camps. You're either going to believe in it you're either going to be, want to believe in it, but you've had no success with it, or you're going to say it's absolute garbage and a load of nonsense. I understand that it's, you know, it's a polarizing subject. And the only reason I talk about it is because I used the law of attraction to change my life from completely rock bottom, where I was morbidly obese, financially broke, I mean, approaching bankrupt. My marriage was a disaster area. We, we'd been in separate bedrooms for three years. My career was just crashing. Uh, I had health problems. You name it, I had problems in this area of my life. And this was, a, this was 10 years ago now, but I was waking up in a one-bedroom, damp apartment 300 miles away from my family and my children because that's the only job I could get. And I was waking up every morning, and I won't lie to you, the first thing I thought every morning was, shit, I'm still alive. I was that low. And I got to the point where I'd literally tried everything and nothing had worked, and I, I had nothing else to lose. I was broken. And so I started looking into the law of attraction, and I started using it, really because I had nothing to lose. I didn't care. And I was surprised that my life started to change so dramatically. And over about two years, I went from that horrible, terrible, broken place to just the polar opposite. Financially secure, amazing relationships, no longer drinking, no longer with a problem with alcohol. I lost 57 pounds in weight. I got fit again. I got healthy. I moved 2,000 miles to a Mediterranean island. I quit my day job that I hated. I set up my own business. Everything changed. 
and I put it down to my mindset. Now, I was using the law of attraction for many, many years without really understanding how it was working. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cynical Brit. So as much as I'd love to believe all the mystic fairy stuff and that this is the universe and, you know, this is some magic happening, I'd like to believe it, but it just doesn't sit well with me. I like logic. I like proof. If something works, I want to take it apart and I want to put it back together again. And I want to understand how it works. And it was only this year that I worked out how the law of attraction works. And it actually made me realize that this impacts on people who are quitting drinking as well. People who are trying to stay sober, people who are trying to do anything big in their lives. So let me explain to you why your mindset is so important when it comes to quitting drinking. As you know, there are two parts to your brain. You have the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. The conscious mind is weak and pathetic. It can do one or two things at a time. It's, a, it's a, an assessment machine, a judgment machine. It's the part of you that is judging me now. It's the part of you that's listening to my words and it's either saying, yeah, he's talking sense or it's saying, no, nope, not buying this. Who is this guy? It's that part of your mind that's making a judgment and assessment. And it's also, you know, it, it's also the part of your mind. If you step out into the street in the, and a car is coming towards you, it's assessing the danger. It's saying, OK, how far is that car away? How fast is it moving? How long is it going to take me to get to the other side? Am I in danger? So it's always evaluating your surroundings and what you're being exposed to. But it's weak. You can only do one or two things at a time. Then you've got the subconscious mind, which is infinitely bigger and infinitely more powerful. And it can do millions of things at a time. So right now in this moment, it is beating your heart in perfect rhythm. Isn't it great you don't have to do that consciously? There's a program in your head to do it. It's dealing with your respiration, your breathing. It's sending oxygen in the perfect amount to the muscles. It's controlling your skin temperature, your sweating, your perspiration. It's processing all the sounds that are coming into your awareness now. The sights, the smells, the tastes. It's doing millions of things. And while it's amazing and while it's powerful, there is too much data coming into our awareness for it to deal with. Even if you sit in an empty room on your own with no sound and no entertainment, you're still dealing with millions of pieces of information coming into your awareness. And your subconscious just can't deal with it all at the same time. And so it has to make a decision on what's important to you. Now, this is where a part of the brain activates. There is a part of our brain in the center called the reticular activating system. And it's a filter. It's a filter that narrows down the, uh, our band of our awareness. So it decides what's important and puts your focus on that. And it throws away the other information that is not useful in that moment. For example, if you were getting attacked in the street, if someone was mugging you, you probably wouldn't notice what brand of sneakers the mugger was wearing. Or if it started to get a bit cloudy or if the temperature dropped a couple of degrees, because none of that is important. Your reticular activating system will tunnel vision you in on what is critical in that moment. OK, so it's doing this all the time. Now, the thing is, what we focus on gets bigger. Have you ever had some symptoms? You felt a bit unwell or, you know, something's popped up and it was a bit unusual and you went to Dr. Google and you typed in your, your symptoms into Dr. Google. <laughs> what did Dr. Google suggest? Did he suggest you're about to die immediately? And it's cancer. It's always cancer, isn't it? No matter what, even if you've got a, a sniffle, you type it into Dr. Google, you've got cancer. What? And then the more you search, the more you ask Dr. Google, the more certain Dr. Google becomes that you've definitely got cancer. Anyone else done this or is it just me? Please like and comment. Tell me if you've done this so I know I'm just not on my own here. And the reason this happens 
It's not because you've got cancer or not because Google wants to scare you. It's because of something called confirmation bias. And essentially, our subconscious wants to prove to us that what we believe is correct. And so th this is where it comes into quitting drinking. So if your reticular activating system is tunneled down and focused on the belief that you need alcohol to relax, that alcohol is a part of life, that alcohol is essential to getting a good night's sleep. You need alcohol to, to have self-confidence. If, if that is what you are focusing on, your subconscious will now go off on a little mission to prove to you that what you're focusing on is real. So you will get more and more evidence that a life without alcohol is miserable. How can you go on vacation without drinking? How can you spend a Christmas or Thanksgiving without having a drink? How do you celebrate your birthday without alcohol? And all of this information feels real. It feels really solid, like it's fact, not opinion, fact. But in exactly the same way that when you type in Dr. Google your symptoms and he says you're about to die within minutes, that feels real. You get scared, don't you? You start to panic, you start to worry. You book an appointment with a doctor, which you should have done in the first place. So this is why it's so important, because when people, when people come to me worried and scared about their drinking, they've started to see really bad things appearing in their life, and it's really started to damage their relationships and their family and everything, and they come to me, if they come to me and they say, Craig, I've had enough, that's it. I don't want alcohol in my life anymore. It's poison. It's attractively packaged poison. It's killing me. I'm done with it. I'll do anything, Craig, to get this filth out of my life. Then that's a beautiful thing because that's their focus. That's what they're tunnel visioned on. They're focused on getting this poison out of their life. And life is going to be so much better for me when I stop drinking poison for fun. When you have that mindset, quitting drinking is easy. I'll show you how the illusion is performed. You'll see it, you'll understand the logic, and you'll never be able to look at alcohol the same way again. And because you've got your subconscious on your side, now off on a mission to provide evidence to back up your belief that life is better without alcohol, it just, it's so easy. Because everywhere you go and every day you see more and more proof that life without alcohol is amazing. However, when people come to me and they say, Craig, my health's going downhill fast. I've just been told that my liver levels are all over the place. My wife has said to me, she's going to leave me if I don't quit drinking. So you've got to help me. I don't think it's going to work, but you're my last chance. <laughs> you know, my, my heart sinks a little bit because I think you're going to try and demonstrate to yourself what you believe. And your belief at the moment is this is not going to work. And all you're going to end up with at the end of this process is a really good excuse. You're going to have something you can say to your wife or your husband. Hey, I even did a course online. Nothing worked. So you can't say I didn't try. If you approach it with that mindset, this is probably not going to work. All you're going to end up with is a loser's limp. You're going you're gonna to fail, but you're going to have a story to tell that will justify it to yourself why it's not your fault. And that helps nobody out. You know, excuses and justifications get you nothing. It doesn't matter whether you're dealing with drinking or trying to find the man or woman of your dreams or trying to get ahead in your career. Even if you've got a fantastic excuse, what does that get you? It doesn't get you what you were going after. It doesn't even really get you sympathy from anyone. It just gives you plausible deniability. It gives you a way of lying to yourself in a way that kind of feels real. So my advice to you today is get your mindset right. If you're at the point now where you're saying, look, enough, I've had enough of this poison in my life. It's making me miserable, it's killing me, it's destroying my relationships, it's breaking me financially, then 
when you get started with me at the online course or you come to boot camp, come with the mindset that everything is about to get better. Come with the mindset that this is going to be easy. This is going to be fun to do. And your life is going to get awesome as a result of it. If you can condition yourself to get that in your head, then when you get started on my course or you sit down in that chair at boot camp, you're going to have a blast. And every day is going to feel amazing because your subconscious will go on a mission to provide evidence to back up your beliefs. So I got a feeling that this, you know, this content today is going to be a bit polarizing. Some people are going to get it. And some people are going to dismiss it as, you know, airy fairy. I get that because, like I said, I'm a cynical old Brit myself. If I talk to my father about this, who's even more cynical than me, he would dismiss a lot of it as bloody rubbish. But then my father is very much of the opinion that hard work, son. Hard work. That's the only way to get ahead. Everything has to be a struggle if it's valuable in my dad's eyes. I don't agree. So... I would love to hear what you think. Please comment on YouTube and tell me what you think. Uh, hopefully, I get to see you at boot camp. If not, then at least come and join me for a free quit drinking webinar. Go and register your place right now at the website, stopdrinkingexpert.com. Thank you very much. And uh, don't forget, if you have any questions, drop me an email. Always happy to help. Craig at craigback.com. Thank you. insistent that this has to be difficult to deal with. And I'm excited to be here today to show you that, that simply isn't true. It can be dealt with simply, quickly, and without willpower. We live in a bubble of unreality with this drug. It's the only drug that when you get a problem with it, they blame you and not the drug. That doesn't happen with any other substance. Repeatedly drinking a highly addictive substance and getting addicted should not be seen as some weird outcome or that you're a freak. It should be seen as the entirely logical conclusion of your actions. <laughs>